I really like AM fixtures and uh, hoses for a lot of reasons. I will leave a link to the tutorial in the description below. Uh, they're reusable for one. Now, a while back, they only had stainless steel braided hose, and you gotta be careful of the ends because they get very sharp, and the stainless steel rubbing up against anything is abrasive and actually can wear holes and stuff. So I'm gonna opt for cloth this time around. This is the remote oil filter adapter for the old engine. The reason I gotta change the hoses is that the remote oil filter was located directly in front of the engine on the old setup. And now the oil filter is over on this side, so they need to be longer. And I wanna go to the, the cloth. So the first thing, oh, and this, uh, the other thing is, is this oil filter adapter was given to me by Jack Gifford, who's a member of the PY form. PY form is a Pontiac form. This is an old Mickey Thompson part. They don't make them anymore, you can't get them. It did say Mickey Thompson on the outside, but I had to grind that off because this goes on the block and the rail for the dragster goes right here, so I had no clearance. I literally have no clearance, so I had to take an eighth inch off this in order to make it fit. So let's let's take this uh, fitting apart. Now what I have here is a AN hose fitting and then an adapter that goes from AN fittings to pipe fittings. So there's really two fittings right here. So let's take it apart. It's really nice that these are reusable. Now you should use aluminum wrenches on these things, otherwise you scratch them up. This is a race car, so I'm not, it's not a show car, so I'm not all that concerned about some scratches on some fittings. And putting an AN wrench on this nut is problematic in that it's so close to this nut that it makes it difficult to do it. But in this case, they happen to line up so I can do it. So let's take the hose off first. I'm trying to be gentle on this aluminum but I will scratch it. Okay, now the reason this makes a seal on that is because you see this cone here? You slide the hose on there and then you tighten the nut down on it and the nut tightens down on the hose and this cone and it makes a seal. But we should be able to just pull this off like that. So there's that hose. The next thing is to unscrew it from the fitting. Okay, like so. So now we got the hose adapter. And now, see that doesn't fit. And I don't think an eight fits. Nope, an eight doesn't go on, so I have no choice. So that's how you take an A and fitting apart. The end is just the same, it just doesn't have this adapter on it to pipe thread. If uh, time permits, I'll show it to you. They do make special clamps for jaws to hold these things. This is just a plastic jaw that I bought. So, uh, theoretically, I should be able to get this on there like that. Now I can't get this in there. So what you're seeing on there is not sealer, that's anti-seize. This is an aluminum fitting, so you gotta use anti-seize, otherwise it'll gall up. I have to put that one in the vise. Okay, we got all the fittings apart. Now, what I'm gonna do, because I don't know how long to make these, is I'm going to hook up both ends like this to the adapter. Then we'll take it out and put it on the motor and mark where I have to cut them off. And I'll end up with a piece here, not that it'll be usable at that point, but at least it'll be the right length. So now we need to put fittings together. So let me, I'll be right back. 
It's been a while since I've done one of these AN fittings, so let's see if I can remember how to do it. Now, one of the first things you need to do as a very important step to, to get started is you got to cut the end of the hose off square. You got to start with a square end. And the other thing is, is that these hoses tend to fray right on the ends here. So an easy way to fix that is to take a little tape and wrap the end of the hose. And what you want is a nice, thin, strong wrap. So if you take some electrical tape and you want a sharp cut off, so don't pull it, just cut it. And remember this thing wraps on in reverse of what you would normally want. So you want to put this on backwards from what you would normally wrap. This is the hose end that screws on to the hose. It does have threads in the end and they are reverse of normal threads. So instead of screwing it on clockwise, you would screw it on counterclockwise. And that's why you gotta wrap the tape backwards from what you would normally wrap tape so it doesn't come undone when you put the nut on. And you just wrap this and you want one nice tight wrap up onto itself and then take the scissors and cut it off. Now there's a bunch of ways to cut this hose and I think they even make a special cutter. Hacksaw is not the way to go and you got to remember there's steel inside the hose so you can't just cut it with a knife. So I found the best way is to use a cutoff wheel. Nice straight cut. Resist the urge to rip that off because again you're going to fray the end and that makes it very difficult to get the nut on. So take the scissors you got and just cut it off. So you get a nice clean end. Now this is an oil filter line so you don't want anything down inside so take, take the air holes and blow it out. I'll do it again when I put the other ends on so the hose is shorter. This hose end has spreads in it and they're counterclockwise. Normally you would screw it on like this, but in this case you screw it on like this. And that's so that when you put this fitting on, you screw it in, you're tightening it versus loosening it. Now hold on a second. Now I've used these fittings before, so I'll make sure these threads are nice and clean. So I'm going to run a pick around the inside just to clean them out. you screw this thing on and this is where it's important that this is wrapped because if it's frayed you'll never get it on the end. And see how I'm going the reverse of what you would normally go and this is a tight fit and you screw it on. Now there's a lip down inside this nut that you want the hose to come up, up, up against. Let me show you. If you look in the end of this fitting, you can see how the hose is right up against the threads. I don't know if you can see it or not, but right there, you can see the hose is right up against the threads. So you want the hose to go all the way into this fitting until it's right up against the threads. So 
the next step is a step that I do that I don't know that if you have to do it or not. But what I do is I take a piece of tape, and this is used. You take a piece of tape and go around this hose just in back of the nut. Now, the reason you're doing that is you want to make sure the hose isn't pushed out of this fitting when you screw on this piece. And it's going to push it out a little bit, but if it pushes out more than an eighth of an inch, then you want to start over. The next step that really makes it easy is you take an owl, I don't know what you call this thing, but it's, it's a big owl, put a little oil on it, run it down inside this fitting and what that does is push the hose up against the side of the fitting and makes it nice and even and it also lubricates it. Then very important, these are aluminum fittings, you want to put some anti-seize on these threads. If you don't do that they'll gall. And I'm an anti-seize king. More, I like more rather than less. And it gets over everything. I don't care how clean you are, it gets on everything. And then you screw this in. Now this screws in normal. The other one screwed in backwards. Now this one screws in normal. And what it's gonna do is as you screw it in, this hose is gonna wanna turn a little bit. And when it turns, it actually tries to tighten itself. And it starts out easy, but it doesn't stay that way. Now, most people would think you tighten this all the way down against that, that fitting, but you really don't. You want to leave a gap. And the rule of thumb is, is you use your fingernail. And I have fingernails but they're all broke off. So 30 thousandths is about right. So you can use a feeler gauge. Where's my feeler gauge? It still needs to go a little bit. Getting there. And then what I like to do is there's flats on this and flats on this. I kind of like to line the two flats up. It just makes it look nice. Okay, let's check it. Okay, we're there. So let's go back half a flat. Yep, that's a snug fit. And the flats are nice and lined up. And you can see that the hose didn't get pushed out. That's what this is. This is just an indicator that when you screw this fitting in, you don't push the hose out of the fitting. So now you know you've got a good fitting. There you go. So, now I'll do two more. No, then I'm gonna, now I'm gonna put these fittings on to this adapter and then I'm going to feed the hose through and see how long it has to be and then do the other ends. Okay, I'll get those done and I'll get back to you. I'm back a little earlier than I expected. I wanted to show putting the hoses on to this fitting before we go upstairs. So now I said it was important to put anti-seize on the fittings that are aluminum. There's no sealant required because of the taper. When you screw an AN fitting together, those two tapers go together, so there's no sealant required here. But when you, when you screw a pipe fitting into, in this case, a remote oil filter adapter, you do have to seal it. Now, a lot of people like the Teflon tape because you don't get pieces of it in your flow. I like the uh, 
the liquid it's just my personal preference and I'm just very careful not to get any sealant anywhere near the opening in fact I stay about a thread back like so and then I'll wipe it off now the the big disadvantage to this stuff is forgetting to put the top on and I've done it a bunch of times so we screw this in now an AN fitting an AN wrench does not fit this fitting unfortunately so you gotta use a wrench you don't have to really reef on this but you want it tight I'd say that's tight enough that's good Okay, make sure you put the top on. This this stuff I really like. And I did clean this up before I turned the video cameras on. That's good. Now these fittings, they have a swivel on it. So you can you can tighten this without turning the hose. So, but you do want to put anti-seize there because that's aluminum. Okay. And that's tight. That's all you gotta do. Now we're ready to go upstairs. See you tomorrow.